Oh boy. Welcome back to another episode of the Northern Steel Podcast, everybody. It's two weeks in a row with a loss. Welcome back. It's episode 82. Famously, after Antoine Randall L., best quarterback to ever play in Super Bowl 40. Sorry, big men. Antoine Randall L., 82. Thank you for welcome. Uh, welcome back. My name is Dominic, and with me as always, oh, except not always, it's not my brother Chris, it's my good friend Derek Fletcher. Give it up for him. Yes, thank you, Derek. <laughs> Derek is a longtime Viking fan. Teetering on the pessimistic side. Yep, exactly. But I'm having a good year this year. Right, Derek? I mean, they're, you know, we're heading to a bye. Haven't played a complete game on offense. Just, you know, set your hopes low and you'll never get let down. That's what I like to hear. And that's what Northern Steel is all about. It really is. <laughs> just lowering the bar. Just being like, okay. Derek's going to join us today card. to talk about football, talk about Steelers. Yeah, exactly. Play for a wild card. We're, we're going to talk about Steelers, football, uh, all the teams. Probably some Vikings too, but because Chris is busy, but we will always do the highlights like we do every single week. So if you miss the Steelers and Cowboys game because you're too busy cheerleading and tryouts to try to get on the big blue star, I've got you covered. Week five, Sunday night against the Cowboys, and we are starting off hot with a field goal highlight. Look, I get it. You have a 20-year-old in college cutting these highlights, but please provide some kind of direction. And now we're trading field goal highlights. Are you, you're mocking me, aren't you? A three and three ball game. So glad we got to watch both of those. Now, finally, some plays. On third and 14, Dak goes back to pass and finds a tight window for CD. And here you can see D's 10 toes. He's able to keep in bounds during this fantastic catch. Cowboys driving, and they're now in the red zone. And cheerleader, here we go. Prescott is double teamed from both ends in true Cowboy cheerleader fashion. But he's not catching a load. He's dropping his. And Steelers recover the fumble, preventing Dallas some points. Now, the Steelers will, yeah, never mind. Let's skip ahead to a later drive to the Cowboys, I guess, where they are kicking another field goal. 3-6, Cowboys on top, according to the history Quite books. Quite the barber. Surely now the Steelers, okay, never mind. Their ass. Cowboys ball again in the red zone. 57 seconds left, and here we go. Throws it right to the defense. Steelers again make another stop in the red zone and keep the score close into halftime. Thank you, defense, for bending and not breaking for now. Third quarter, and after a violent hit to Justin Fields and a dot from Kyle Allen, the Steelers score a touchdown to Connor Hayward to go up 10 to 6. That is a one wide open to meet the ball. Sexism and appropriation in these highlights. Let's see what else I can squeeze in there. Speaking of trying to fit it in, Dak and the Cowboys have the ball again, and he's going to throw it deep down the middle, which will set up, you guessed it, another field goal. Except this highlight is worth showing because the kick is blocked. Again, the Cowboys are denied points. Surely the Steelers don't lose this game still, right? But alas, no offensive highlights means this team cannot move the ball, and the Cowboys drive all the way down the field, and Dak throws a touchdown pass to, let me see here, um, Rico Dowdle? A legend, I'm sure. The Steelers' defense is gassed, and now they're losing, and of course, the Cowboys are going to have the ball again in these highlights. Dak says... Here we blow a lead by throwing another pick. This time to Joey Porter Jr. JPJ making the great over the shoulder interception on this deep route, giving this team life. A chance to finally put some points on the board. Are we gonna see some offensive highlights? Well, instead of showing all the plays the Steelers could do, let's just skip ahead to them in the red zone. And let's show this play. Justin Fields throws a shovel pass to Pat Firemuth and he bulldozes his way into the end zone for a touchdown, putting the Steelers on top again. 17 to 13. It hasn't been pretty, but surely with five minutes left and the highest paid defense in the league, the Steelers won't let a game up uh, get, let up a game-winning touchdown. Under one minute to go, though, the Cowboys have driven all the way down the field. He dumps the ball to the left quickly before TJ can ruin it. The ball carrier takes it down to the one-yard line. Tick, 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 NBA tick, tick. NBSU Hunter Lupke. Second and goal from inches out, and they hand the ball off, and the Cowboys running back is destroyed by diving on the land, and Roberts fumble on the field, but unfortunately, Dak gets there first. Third and goal now. Dak is back to pass, dancing around, sees it, a receiver back in the end zone, but it's dropped. Now it all comes down to this, folks. Fourth and goal. Dak is going to take the snap. Rolls away from TJ's pressure. 
fires it in the end zone and it's oh it's caught for a touchdown here we go good play great throw great catch and just like eight years ago in this stadium the cowboys score a late game winning touchdown to ruin my night at least there wasn't a delay in this game and i don't have to watch this after midnight oh wait i did the Steelers then play the lateral game, which never works on almost worked once with AB. Whole lot of hoopla and throwing it around. They don't advance the ball at all. Can't recover it. It's going here, it's going there, it's going everywhere. Eventually the ball will land on the ground as Vermouth throws it behind his back on a gimme ball and the Cowboys recover. A Cowboy player gets up and says, na 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 boo boo blah, as Pickens grabs him by the face mask and tosses him to the ground. Easily making it Pickens' best play of the night. And that was the game. 3-2. and two. As a non-Steelers fan, Derek, what did you think about that game? You know... <sighs> Fields looks promising. He's not turning over the ball. He, you know, didn't throw for a ton of yards, but I think the last couple of weeks he's kind of been in that 300 range where he's, you know, throwing the ball down the field. Um, something that we... Maybe saw glimpses of in Chicago, but certainly not enough. Um, his passer rating is in that 90s flirt with 100, whereas with the Bears, I mean, it was 85 to 88, and he, you know, ran like a running back. But I don't know. I, I it's way too early to tell. Three and two. I mean, so you're talking about it, the positives. It, yeah, I mean, Dallas is a good team, as much as people, you know, kind of harp on them all the time, but. I mean, you got Dak, you got CD. The Steelers lost by three points um, in a game where they should have won. Had three turnovers, had a blocked field goal. Or three takeaways, I should say. Had a blocked field goal and still should have won that game. But I think the record was teams that had that happen to them, like in the Cowboys case, were 19, 160, and one. Another 20, 160, and one. And so Cowboys get the win there. Uh, second Prime week in a row deck. that the Steelers lose by three points after a game they should have won. The, the thing is, Derek, is like, I want to keep this, this thing positive and light. Because uh, last year with Kenny Pickett and company in Matt Canada, I, would, I was harping on this a lot on this team and on coaching. So uh, some, uh, I was talking to some people about like, do you think the Steelers are fortunate to be three and two? And I would say they're uh, almost... I don't know if unfortunate is the right word, but I'd say they're almost unfortunately three and two because I think they should be five and zero, oh. and I think they're being uh, too many mistakes and being held back by coaching to be at the five and zero oh where they should be. You know, you're not wrong there. It kind of reminds me of uh, another team that the Steelers did beat Atlanta. They're three and two now as well. Yeah, but they very easily could be five and zero oh as well. Kirk didn't play like total garbage that first game. And then uh, against Kansas City, if they, uh, uh, you know, it was a, it was a one score game, it was close. Um, but they're just kind of in that weird pack of like, are they going to be seven and ten? Are they going to be like eleven and six? And we just don't know where that's going to fall. But a lot of that, I think, is going to have to come up to the coaching because I, the talent's there. Um, it I, is Fields there. Is a it guy, is there, and that's and that's and, what I wanted to bring up is because uh, I feel like I really hope it works out here for him. Sure but if it is there or not? What's that? Kind of losing Derek on the internet side of things. That's the way it goes. He's in, he lives in North Dakota. Derek, are you there still? <laughs> I'm, I'm still here. All there, right. There you got me. <laughs> I do got gotcha. you. There uh, we go. What I was going to say is I, I think I've been in your ear about the coaching of this team, and, and that's kind of like the problem I've seen. But do you? Uh, you're saying that you do think they have talent, because I do. No, I, I they definitely have talent on both sides of the ball. It's clear the defense is always good, but offensively, I don't think Pickett had it. I don't think uh, it's fair. He was pushing the he. I don't think That's he was fair. pushing the ball quite like Dak did. He just didn't look like a guy who's going to throw four thousand yards a year. And Fields, I'm like, oh, he might get. He could be the first guy to throw over four thousand and rush over a thousand. I mean, the <laughs> right. So that's both the question. What is the problem? What could it be? I, I know what I, it is. I, <laughs> I know what the problem I is. I think you're going to say just coaching in general. Sure. But, am. Um, 
you know, that might be right. But I, I mean, I, they just haven't, they've been together for five games. This is a completely new team. Tomlin like when you ch- has been doing this same old song and dance since 2018. I would love, I would love to, uh, let me ask you a trivia question, Derek, that you're not going to know, but that's okay. Do you know the longest drought the Steelers have gone through without winning a playoff game? No, 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 no. The amount of years they've gone without winning a playoff game. You know what the longest drought they've had? Seven. At close, it's eight years. Once, ah. once in the 60s and once right now. <laughs> Currently, they're in the longest drought tied that they've ever been in without winning a playoff game with Mike Tomlin and all these talented people as head coach compared to the 60s where they had mailmen and postal workers working on this te- playing for this team. So it's, it's okay. So I uh, look, man, Mike Tomlin was a great coach. I just think, I think he's pretty stale now. And that's a bold thing for you to say out loud, but I think it's pretty stale. I think, I think he, uh, and I've talked about this before and I'm trying to be like in a positive way. But so, you know what? Let's, let's keep it positive. Let me show you something. I think it's kind of fun. It's just to kind of, this is just one thing, right? This is one instance of, of something I think could be kind of funny to share with you. I don't even know if you saw this. Oh, what is going on here? Okay, sure. All right. <laughs> I got to find this. I got to find this, uh, this thing now. Okay. Right here, I have the Cowboys and Steelers kind of game cast is what they had going on. So Cowboys got a field goal first. They went down, did their thing. And then Steelers got a field goal next. But let's, let's look at how they got there, right? So Justin Fields ran right away for eight yards. Najee Harris for four yards. But that was, a set, that was on second two, so I gave him a first and ten. Justin Fields incomplete deep left to Connor Hayward. That was he dove for it is in his hands. Just dropped it. Unfortunate, but that's okay. It's on first down. Second down, they he goes to five yards, but defensive holding on Mac first down. Next play and first down throws it to George Pickens for eight yards. Second and two, Najee no gain. Third and two, Justin Fields short left to Najee Harris up to fifteen yards. And we're on Dallas is thirty now, getting close to the scoring range here. Moving the ball. The Steelers do not, the Steelers have averaged six points in the first half. Okay. I'm going to scroll up a little bit. I don't know if you read ahead. <laughs> but first and 10 at the 30. Fields deep left to oh, Washington incomplete. He should have put more loft on it. That's a rough throw, but he was open. Gave more loft. It could have been a touchdown, right? That's all right. First and 10. Keep going. Second and 10. Jonathan Ward, fourth string, fifth string practice squad player for two yards. Right. Okay. Now you got a third and eight, Derek. Third and eight, and Dallas is 28. Do you think it was a pass play and Fields got sacked? Do you think that it was a bad pass play? Do you think it was a fumbled snap? Or do you think they called a, ru- uh, a run? Well, you're making me think they called a run now. They ah. called a run. But to, ah. this, to a substitute teacher, no disrespect to Shamklin, who ran to the left end for five <laughs> yards, which it just tells me that for someone who Tom, for when Tomlin says he doesn't live in their his fears, they want to start fast. That is living in your fears on a third and eight to to do a run play because he was like ah we almost got it, but at least we're gonna get points. They this team can't be like well at least we get points. They need to score. That's what they need to do. And if they're not scoring, they're gonna be in trouble. Well, and even you still got me. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> I, I got you back there, again. There, there, we're still there. Okay, yep. off off of what you just said there. Um, yeah, it's third and eight. I, you should pass. I mean, your quarterback isn't. Uh, I mean, Joe Flacco can move now. I guess everyone can move, but you know, you don't have Aaron Rodgers back there. You don't have a forty year old court quarterback. You have Justin Fields. So you should call a pass play, and if he knows that he's in four down territory, he for sure is going to run ahead for three and slide just to make it fourth and short. No, totally. But yeah, handing it off to not even Naj, but you know, I don't, I don't know if Naj that might be part of the problem too. Is Arthur Smith is more used to you know Ryan Tannehill 
Derrick Henry. And I'm glad you brought that I up. Na- <laughs> I, I thought not. I mean, I thought Naj. I think he's great, and there's just something not working right now. It, the what's not working, Derek, is uh, is the the game. The when they hired Arthur Smith, they talked about the the scheme that he likes to run, which is gap runs, is the is the exact scheme that Najee is not good at. So a lot of fans are like, Cordell Patterson's way better, Jen Warren's way better. Those guys are better suited for that offense to run, and uh, this is not a complete fit, but. Well, uh, a huge also problem with coaching is the OC, DC, offensive line coach. The offensive line coach sucks and has sucked for a while. I'm going to show you some screenshots, okay, <laughs> of the running back plays with Najee. What, this was supposed to be positive. It's positive. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's positive. I'm absolutely sure that this is ridiculous. Here's a screenshot. What do you see here with uh, this player here? <laughs> Oh boy! Looks like we have two people out in the block. Eighty-three doesn't grab this guy. Seventy-seven a little bit late on grabbing this guy. That's not gonna work. I mean, it. it uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this play. He cuts up right. There's that hole right this guy's there. Guy's already there. He's this already guy, there. He's already there. You know what? I have a better example to a way to show you this because I pulled these. Because I, I I pulled those because I thought I was gonna have from uh I thought I was gonna have time I should say to make that into kind of like a game show almost, but because I didn't have time we can just pull this bad boy up. Now this first play this is the worst one for him because that 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 one right there he should have been faster on right. I'll give that one to Naj right here. Boom! Sure, cut hit up. the hole. Boom! Hit the hole. Go. Yep, that's on Naj. Absolutely. I mean, how far did that go, though? Was that that's still like four or five yards, right? Yeah, that, totally. Very decent. Look at that right there. When Susie gets the ball, already there, he's already getting hit two yards in the back. See, see you later. Doing his best he can to get some kind of positive yards. Uh, look, look at this one right here. Okay, that's where he's supposed to go. It's all bunched up. You get a bounce it. I'm guessing. You know, yep, got to. But then everyone's there. <laughs> what's he supposed to do what's he supposed to do people are pissed at him let's see this one that guy's chasing fields okay this one I think could be on Naj but then the, the uh, but, he just but the, but the blocking right instead here of left. but it's, it's like this which I like Zach Frazier but Zach Frazier this guy gets around him so now he's turned around and now you got and this he doesn't hold his block, so they have this guy and this guy both rushing at him. I mean, see you later. Uh, what you can do there? What were, his no- what were Naj's numbers this game? Well, I don't know about rushing. I can look it up real quick, but I know he was the top receiver with 35 yards, which is another problem, which is why George Pickens was as upset as he was. <laughs> well, yeah, and Fields threw for like 130. Yeah, oh, I yeah. Mean- I, was, I, I did a bet. And don't tell anybody, but uh, they had to throw over 180 yards. They did not get there. Oh, goodness. Just a lot of these, are, there's nowhere to go. I want to get to that one play that I showed you the first screenshot of. I think it might be this one, potentially. Uh, no, this one's, this one's, I think it's kind of on, well, no, it just closes up so quick. Everything just closes up so quick, where they're just like not disciplined on their blocks, their whiffing blocks. They're not holding them long enough, in my opinion. And I know Nacho's not, not the greatest, like, oh, Jesus Christ. That one's brutal. And Broderick Jones is a big problem as well. Hey, that's 77 right here. That's also a big issue. I think this is the to- uh, That's not the toss yet. Let's, I'm going to skip past this one. So, just because I want to get to the toss. I think that's the first screenshot I showed you. We were like, oh, sure, he cuts it. Okay, here's the, okay. Here's the two guys. Here's Connor Hayward, Broderick Jones. Here's this dude Somebody right here. Look at him. Just chip him. Just here's chip this dude him right and here. he'll go. He can go get this guy, and that's a great play. Does that happen? No. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of people who are like, ah, oh, Najee sucks, or this or that, or blah, 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 you know, but um, I think, one, his scheme isn't great for Naj to perform in, and two, the, the coaching on all levels, I mean, offensive, defensive, offensive line, 
is just not there. So it's a rough time. So when it's like when I'm trying to be optimistic and stuff about you're right, three and two. I like the way Fields has looked. I like uh, I like the playmaker. I like the roster. I think the roster is really good. And but then when you want to be like, ah, oh, man, I've seen this problem for years. And unless Tomlin wakes up and he goes, I've got it. It's time to change. Then I just don't see a a light at the end of the tunnel for me. Now, yeah, well, they played Dallas. Um, I don't think Dallas is that what? good. <laughs> I, you know, I, I still think they're going to hang around in like the wild card area. Especially because their defense is bombing the league and they're missing Micah Parsons in that game and Demarcus Lawrence. Man, yeah, that doesn't look good, but no, <laughs> no, it does not. <laughs> I mean, you got to get you get those out of the way early in the year. I mean, Dallas is not like you're playing. Um, I, I mean, I don't even know who to say anymore. Like Cleveland, I guess, like or yeah. like Vegas. Like the, the the thing is also is that the Steelers like I haven't I can't tell you the last time I watched a comfortable game. Because the Steelers don't, uh, they don't get big leads anymore, especially after Big Ben retired. Uh, Tomlin, in the same way of, I'm telling you, where he like, um, he plays scared. He doesn't play to win; he plays not to lose. So when they get up by seven, there he's like, "That's enough. Time to run the ball and run this clock out." And that's not what they, they should be up by thirty before they decide to do that. And that kind of comes down to first half decisions. That's not like, oh, in the it, late in the game they didn't score. It's like, you know, early in the game. They're not going for it on fourth down. Like, even if you don't make it, everyone's like, hey, you're you're trying. Or, or it's because they're just trying to, they're really trying to force the run so much. They're like, we're a running team. We're going to keep forcing the run. It's like, if that's not there, pass it. But they're just right. not passing it. Right. And they can probably, I mean, even with, well, Naj is a good receiver. And I mean, even yeah. Patterson, he, he's, he's not injured. bad. He's injured, but yeah. Oh, Pat. Oh, he is. And so is Warren. That's so. That's why you had a, a substitute teacher and a fourth round practice <laughs> squad player running the ball. But uh, um, I had some other things to talk about. But uh, you know, I'll leave them. I'll leave them there. But uh, basically, basically, where I want to get, especially with the Vikings, we're going to relate to this, and, and we can talk about a little bit of them. But the, but the reason why I was going to bring up the Vikings too is because, especially like the Steelers' defense, right? The Steelers' defense. Um, has all pros or Pro Bowls at every single level of the of the defense. They're the highest paid defense in the NFL, and I feel like they are good enough, but not great. And I feel like they're good enough in spite of Terrell Austin, who's their defensive coordinator, if you didn't know, but not because of him. Whereas Brian Flores, who I think the Steelers should have kept and not got rid of, it, he is, I think, coaching a phenomenal defense in Minnesota with a bunch of no-namers, in my opinion. Now, you could, you, I mean, you watch the Vikings. I mean, also, you've been fond of the Vikings, so you can tell me if I'm wrong, but it's like, even when I look at the the starting lineup, like, Harrison Phillips is playing really well right now for the Vikings. Couldn't even tell you who he is or where he's from. Uh, I know I've heard of Jerry Tillery, but their, their whole front seven is playing good. Jonathan Bullard, is he playing well? So, I've not, never heard of him. I know they got Jonathan Greener from Houston. Uh, he had a good year last year. Ivan Pace Jr. I, l- I I only know him because we scouted him for this podcast, and I love him. But he's undrafted, so my some so, some people might think he's bad. He's not. He's really good. Uh, Blake Cashman, shout out Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Uh, yep. <laughs> he's good. Andrew Van, G- Andrew Van Ginkle, where did he come from? He's got two pick sixes. He's a literal Viking scoring touchdowns. Oh, who, no one, yeah, it's like who's heard of him? Stephon Gilmore is forty five years old. He's still shutting people <laughs> down. Harrison Smith is like, yep, I know who Harrison Smith is. Know him? He's good. <laughs> you know, future hall, future hall of famer, and I mean, he yeah. is 34, 35 years old. He has no business. Totally. I mean, playing Cameron, how good he is. Cameron Bynum, who cares? Shaquille Griffin, who cares? Byron Murphy. Good acquisition uh, two years ago, but better this year. It's like my point is, is that like they don't have studs on their team, but the way they're playing, the way they're being coached, they're becoming studs. Now people are like, oh, Andrew Van Ginkle. He's super good. Was he? Or is it because he's been coached so well? Now he's super good. Right. 
Well, I, you know, maybe you know to I mean? flip it to right. Maybe to flip it to the Steelers. I don't. Do they have to like mix it up on I offense think I lost and do Derek potentially? We'll see. Oh, I might cut my oh, own. Here we go. Audio out if he's talking. There you go. You got me. I got you now. Okay. No, I I could hear you the whole time. It's probably me. Oh gosh. No, that's um, fine. I, I don't know if you were talking. Like, if you if that happens again, just keep talking through it, and I'll just wait till you come back in. Sweet. Well, no. To build off what you were saying, I mean, the Vikings have all these kind of no namers that are making names for themselves. I mean, does the Steelers' offense have to do something like that? I mean, do they have the coaching to do it? Yeah, I know. Or no. do they? Or to even flip it. You know, I, I, they're like this 500, potentially above 500 team with some potential. Do they have to go get a name? A la, I, the, a la yes. um, yeah. maybe a wide receiver that's yeah. disgruntled. <laughs> yeah, and I agree with you. And that would be awesome. And that'd be, and I would, and I would take that. But I guess my counter argument is that no roster in the NFL is A1 top to bottom. Sure, the Steelers have holes at wide receiver two, at slot cornerback, at, uh, honestly at uh edge right now with all the injuries so sure they have these holes but i mean you can't fix every single hole and sometimes people gotta step up and be coached better to play better i mean uh you could argue uh, you know and some people like to say well fields isn't good enough and it's like look at sam darnold for the vikings look what he's doing this year co- i mean kelsey is a good coach and this is a year of quarterbacks kind of reinventing themselves it is and I do think, even though, I mean, season's not done. I, I think Fields is reinventing himself. I, yeah, he already has. Um, but, I mean, still even, do you think Devontae and having Pickens as your wide receiver too? I mean, no matter how many, I mean, but also no matter how many special tools you have, if you're not using them correctly, if we're still running the ball <laughs> on third and eight, Totally. I, I think Devont- Devontae's going to be asking to leave again. Leave again. again. <laughs> a weekend. Gets right. in and then leaves immediately. That could happen. It really could. Um, we're going to move. Let's move on because we're. I'm getting long winded, kind of talking trash about the Steelers. So I'm going to move on to previewing this Positive. game. Yeah, let's, let's preview the Raiders game. Preview of the Raiders game. This is when Chris does his favorite segment. So I'll load it up with. Keys to the game. As the keys to the game, we got three keys. Uh, they're usually the same, same old, you know, same old stuff every week. Uh, the Raiders starting a new quarterback, the Andrew O'Connell. Got to find some way to to supply pressure. Uh, it's T.J. Watt and nobody else on the other side. Alex Highsmith is hurt. Nick Herbig's hurt. Demarvin Leal's hurt. Uh, so t- uh, the the team's got to find a way. With more blitzing, this uh, surprisingly, the Steelers get a lot of sacks, but they don't blitz a lot. Their uh, blitz pressure is really low, so they need to increase that blitz pressure. They need to blitz more with Patrick Queen, with uh, Mika Fitzpatrick, even with Deshaun Elliott. Find blitzes in there, get pressure in Aiden O'Connell's face, make them scared, make them nervous, and uh, that's going to help out a lot. Um, they also need to be able to, in my opinion, open the playbook. I think this is potentially. Tomlin really loves his veterans. He really loves his uh, uh, guys with experience and pedigree, in quotation marks. Justin Fields, in my opinion, has earned the starting job. I agree with you. I think he is playing better. But if he doesn't play well in this game, I fear that they might throw in Russ and have start Russ after this. And they need to open the playbook and let Justin be Justin. Throw some, throw some passes. You also need to get Pickens happier, too. Pickens is having a rough time. People are calling him out, think he wants to be traded. I don't think so. I like Pickens. I want him to stay. They got to throw the ball to Pickens. They got to throw the Muth. They got to they, they got to pass the ball, in my opinion. Uh, last. No, you're, you're exactly right. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, we can also just call it, it is what it is. I mean, this Raiders team is going through it, man. Yes. This is, <laughs> I don't want to like, you know, say this is a must win for the Steelers, but it's kind of like it is. Come on, I don't think Aiden <laughs> O'Connell, Aiden O'Connell hopping in here is not gonna you know spark up uh, spark up any offense. Whereas I feel like Flacco when he went in with the Colts, you know, <sighs> yeah, they didn't game plan for him. Totally Nobody game plan for Flacco, and I I think that really screwed up uh, um, the Steelers that week. But this is Aiden O'Connell. 
and Flacco's just a better passer. He's got experience too. You know, yeah. Uh, I would say the last key key to the game there would be uh, ball security, actually, rather than the defense getting turnovers. I think the only way this game gets out of hands is is if the Sooners start making a bunch of mistakes like they have in the past two games. And if they keep the mistakes at minimum, they if they play a clean game, they should come out on top. Finally, I lost you here. There we go. I'm back. <laughs> He's back. God, God. Um, um no, go you, ahead, go ahead, you go are ahead. right. You are right. Like they just need to play mistake free football. I think that's what you were saying mostly. Yep. Yeah, totally. I mean, and this is kind of another scary thing where they could play horrible on offense and still end up with a win. I yep. mean, in your opinion, say, Fields show some of his old tendencies. He fumbles three times. The offense just looks like uh, just a little bit of a mess, but they're still four and two. I mean, personally, I still roll with Fields until we are. I mean, until he's hurt. I, it, yeah, just keep him in. I I I I don't want to make the switch because I like Fields and and he's the younger player. So I would like to hope that our future is already in our hands already. Instead of in the draft. So I would like to keep rolling the fields, but I don't know, man. Tala makes a bunch of weird decisions all the time. We'll see what happens. Um, quickly, I'll go through like the depth chart here on the Raiders. You can tell me. Uh, why don't you let me know like if you're a Viking fan playing the Raiders, if you would uh, care or, or not. Okay? So, Aaron O'Connell. I'm not worried at all. Zamir White at running back. Nope. What had happened to Madsen? Is is he hurt? He hasn't played. Uh, he's second he hasn't string. played. He's second string. <laughs> Boy. Woof. Uh, Devonta Adams, not playing. Jacoby Myers might not play. Otherwise, you have receivers of Jacoby Myers, Trey Tucker, and that's it. DJ Turner. <laughs> I mean, once we get to Brock Bowers, it's like, hey, he's on my fantasy team. Let's just keep feeding him the ball. Yeah, Brock Bowers. That's like the only like receiver I'm worried about. Basically, is Brock Bowers. <laughs> That's about. And I it. mean, is is he just kind of like receiver by committee? Where yeah, he's doing great because Devontae's sitting out. Everyone else is kind of banged up, and and I mean they they, ha- <laughs> they have nobody else. No, not at all. Because after after Devontae, it's it's Jacoby Myers. He might not play. It's Trey Tucker who had a great game against the Browns a couple weeks ago. Uh, but then DJ Turner, who's questionable, Tyreek McAllister is questionable, and Jeff Foreman, who's on IR, and that's it. That's all I got. Then you got, uh, yeah, you got Brock Bowers, Michael Mayer, who's questionable. He's, he's a good tight end, too. And then Harrison Bryant has their third string tight end, so just a tight end group. Uh, left tackle, Colton Miller. Never heard of him. Cody Whitehair at left guard. I've heard of him. He's all right. And Andre James at center. Don't care. Dylan Parham, questionable at right guard. And then uh, going up against TJ, with help, I'm sure, and because there's nobody on the other side, you have Thayer Munford Jr. Ah, I don't know who that is. <laughs> I don't okay. know this. Good luck. Yeah, good luck to you. <laughs> on the defensive side, you got Max Crosby. Very good. Going up against Broderick, well, going up against Broderick Jones, and he's been our worst lineman. So good luck, Broderick. You also got John Jenkins. Don't know who that is. Adam Butler. Don't know who that is. Charles Snowden. Don't know who that is. <laughs> because Christian Wilkins, who's their other stud they got, he's out potentially for the year. He just got a big injury. He's an IR. Um, at Linebacker, you got David uh, Divine Diablo, which can I point out is a sweet name, Divine Diablo. It's like he, he seems like he heaven blitz hell. in every play. <laughs> it's just, a, his name is like heaven hell, Divine <laughs> Diablo. <laughs> you also got Robert Spillane, Steelers legend, playing better with the Raiders than he ever did for Steelers. Uh, Tommy Eichenberg at uh, Ohio State, the rookie starting there. Um, I mean, linebacker. I mean, besides Spillane, he's a thumper. None of those guys really worry me there. Jack Jones, who's always good for a pick, he's pretty decent uh, as at cornerback. But then you got Troy Palomalu's nephew, Isaiah Palomalu, at strong safety. 
Trayvon Moore, Morig, who I don't care about free safety, to carry and Bennett on the other quarterback side, who sucks, but so do our wide receiver twos, and then Nate Hobbs at nickel, who I don't care about. So it's like, eh, again, it's kind of like the last two weeks I've, I've previewed this depth chart, and it's like the Steelers should win, and they should, and then you talk about a panic button if they lose. Yeah, kind of. I'd say, yeah, kind of. I would say, yeah, if they lose, there is a little bit of a panic button because the Raiders are in panic mode right now. You've got Absolutely. your two best players on the Raiders that are, I'm going to leave. And then, hey, where he's leaving, I'm going to go with him. <laughs> uh, okay. And then the coach is saying some stuff like, hey, people are checking out or whatever. He kind of commented on uh, people are playing for paychecks. But um, I mean... I don't know if that was a jab at him or that was a jab at the whole team or, you know, uh, tons of things could be said. Um, you get a lot of these Regardless, teams that are... Devante can come. You, you start out three and two, two and three, and um, everyone hits the panic button, like, right away. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even if, say, I mean, I want to say there's no way in hell the Steelers lose, but if they did, they're still three and three, and their division is still wide open yeah the problem is kind of like we had talked before about how their schedule ends up and i feel like you kind of need to win these games now especially when you're trying to like like you said it's new players so as you're trying to be like get more cohesion together and you're trying to get the quarterback relationship with the wide receivers and the lions trying to get cohesion you need to win these games figuring that out when the end of your gauntlet comes week 11 on and it's Six division, six divisional games, four of them which are in a row. Uh, Chiefs, Eagles, Bills, and a couple more division games. So it's like a, just a just a a storm at the end that you need to have a somewhat good record to get through. And even that storm at the end, they're kind of starting slow. Like the Bills, I mean, yeah, not that it's necessarily slow, but they dropped that game to the Texans. Now they're three and two. Yep. So I think they're going to be hungry for a win, especially when they're playing the Steelers. Yeah. And then, uh, um, I mean, everybody in the AFC is relatively slow. Maybe the, maybe the Chiefs will uh, kind of get on that where they were kind of losing in that last quarter of the season the, where they lost the, their one seed. The Chiefs, the Chiefs uh, they're just playing like a complete team. Because Mahomes, I think, has like six touchdowns and six picks, but they just their defense is playing good, too. Just playing like a, they're just playing like a complete team. I mean, Juju Smith Schuster had 100 yards for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Field. Blast for the pass. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, let's wrap this thing up. We've been on this for a while. I'm sleepy. I'm tired. I want to go to bed. Let's do some game picks, Derek. You want to do some game picks with me? Picking the winners of each game as you're frozen again. Okay. I'm back. Game picks. You got me. <laughs> okay. Let's do some game picks. All right, we can go. We can a uh, chat about each one too if you want to. Uh, first game up Thursday night, 49ers at Seahawks. Oh, this is a tough one. Um, I'm just gonna go Seahawks. There's something wrong with the Niners right now. Um, it where, where it where is it? It's 49ers at Seattle. Yep. You know, I think uh, it's gonna be a long long career for Brock Purdy. Um, and I think this is just one of those years where it's going to be a little tougher than it is, than it, than it normally will be. I think I'm going to go 49ers because I'm probably still overrating that team a little too much, but they're, they're supposed to be better than what they are. Um, the Seattle just dropped two games back to back, including one to the giants. So they're also in that three and two range that they need to win desperately. But so are the, but so are the Niners, the Niners are two and three right now, which is insane. So I'm going to go Niners for this one. Then you got in London, Jaguars at Bill at Bears. Excuse me. Ah, this is another really weird one. Um, th- th- it was supposed to be like you know, full panic in uh, uh, Jacksonville, but Caleb Williams is coming into his own now. Um, as a Vikings fan, I really want to pick <laughs> against the Bears, but I want to be right. So I'm I'm gonna go with the Bears. Uh, a very reluctant uh, uh, Bears choice. Yeah, your uh, Chris also has a vendetta against the Bears for some reason, so you you fit that bill equally. But I also want to pick the Bears. <laughs> you know, at, at, but like 
Trevor Lawrence does occasionally show up as himself again. I I mean, does he? He did last week. His stats are comparable to Gardner Gardner Minshew and Daniel Jones. Well, and yeah, so, we know where Gardner Minshew is now. Yeah, so it's it's almost like you could say Daniel Jones has also games of showing out like Trevor Lawrence does because they have this comparable stats. <laughs> you know what? And they're they all got paid except for Gardner. Totally, <laughs> totally, totally. Uh, poor Gardner. I'd take Gardner right now. Uh, you also got. Uh, next game, you got Buccaneers at Saints. Could have been a good game. Not anymore. Oh, yeah. Carr's out. Yep, he's he is. Yep, ob- he's hurt. Obliqued out. So, um, yeah, I, I, Bucks. Yeah. I think I think, ba- I think Baker's a Baker's the real deal, and he's going to have to be going against Kirk for the division. I agree. Also, Spencer Rattler, I want to see fail. So, is that based <laughs> off a high school video and he's way older now? Yes, it is. But still, yeah, we can be petty. We can be petty. That's fine. <laughs> uh, next up is uh, hopefully a good game. Hopefully a game that goes in my favor. I just don't think it will. But it's Commanders at Ravens. And I broke out right at <laughs> when you were saying that. There, I got you, you now. Hear me. I got you now. Okay, just cue in that last team. Commanders at Ravens. Oh, this is really tough. I think Jaden Daniels. He's he's a rookie. Um, you know, best completion percentage was like 77 around 80%. Yeah. He's playing out of his mind right now. Or is it even, it might even be like 81%. He's like a Drew Brees with legs. Yeah. He's um, insane. However, I think he's going to meet a more experienced Lamar. And I think they're, uh, desperate for wins. They want to get that separation of the division. Sorry, Dom Steelers fans, but it's true. But, but I, I think, I think the Ravens are going to pull this one out. Surprisingly, Commanders are four and one. Jaden Daniels has not, has not only been completing a lot of passes, but throwing bombs as well too. He's already beaten the Browns for me, which is great. He's already beaten the Bengals for me, which is great. I would love for him to sweep that whole division, excluding the Steelers, and beat the Ravens. I just don't see it happening. I see the, the Ravens walking away with this win, especially with the way Derrick Henry's been playing lately. But prove prove us wrong, though. I love it. I would love to. <laughs> I love hope they can. Uh, Cardinals at Packers. Boy, I mean, this is kind of one of those where the Packers should win. And I think the Cardinals just hang around. And it's it's very weird. Um, Marvin Harrison Jr., I everyone said he was the real deal. But when, you know, people hype people up, you never know. I mean, he's right. already got four touchdowns. He'll probably add to that total in this game. But I think the Packers are going to pull through. I really hope not. Boy, I am choosing all <laughs> NFC North teams. Yeah, that's unfortunate, especially during a Vikings bye week, but I'm also choosing Packers as well. Uh, Next up, you got Colts at Titans. Colts. Look, man. (laughs) (laughs) You know what sucks about this game is I'm choosing Colts as well, but like, I felt better when Joe Flacco was playing, but I think Anthony Richardson's back. I don't love that. I don't think Jonathan Taylor's back. Michael Pittman's now hurt again. Uh, I don't think they have some of their defenders back. There's like so much going against the Colts in this game, and I'm still gonna pick them. <laughs> the tight, oh. the Titans, the Titans have Will Levis though. So, Manny's you know. boy, you're right. So everyone is safe on the other team. <laughs> <laughs> Up next Whoa. is Texans against the Drake May Patriots. This is a horrible week to start Drake May. It I sure would, is. I would still just wait. Um. All right, CJ Stroud can continue his uh, building his Hall of Fame career and another dub. This is uh, the Patriots are doing the Kenny Pickett route by starting a quarterback in the middle of the season about week five with barely any prep time against a team that's going to blow him out. So wouldn't you wouldn't you have played him against Miami? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to do if you're going to do anything, you would have done that or you're going to wait through their bye week. Right. Because they're already losing. They're already, what are they, one and five? They're one and five, and they have a worse receiver situation than the Raiders right now. Then, yeah, than my high school. So it's pretty rough. Yeah, I'm going to go with Texans as well. Um, Browns at Eagles. 
Okay, I we have just been choosing like the favorites. I want to just say Browns here because the Eagles just look weird, but there's Saquon, there's Jalen Hurts. You have to go with something that's established, and uh, these guys, as kind of weird as they've been playing the last, well, heading to the end of last year, I mean, they're, they're going to win this one. We got a saying around here, Derek, and it's F the Browns. And everything they stand for. <laughs> oh, I so, should have just chose them. Yeah, you, you guys every week are like, Browns lose. <laughs> and, they, and they have been. So it's been great. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. They As they long as look... I keep playing Deshaun Watson, who has more settled court sexual assault cases than touchdowns in his Browns career, I'm going to keep choosing the teams against him. So please, Browns, don't put in Jameis Winston. Keep playing this dog garbage quarterback so I can keep watching you lose. And I'm going to pick the Eagles. Chargers at Broncos. You know, it's got to be Chargers. I, ah. Everyone, it's Chargers at Broncos. Yeah, I mean they have home field advantage. Ah, uh, I just I'm I'm not gonna bet against Harbaugh. Where, okay. where are they? Are they three and two now? Uh, three, or are they three and, and one. Three and two, two and two. Except a bye week. They're two and two. Hold on. They had a bye week last week. Oh, they did. Yeah, they're two and two. And who'd they lose against? Steelers and Chiefs. Yeah, Chiefs and what was the other one? Steelers. We're on the home stretch. Come on, internet, make it through. Please. Oh, no. There we go. Bam. Did you hear me? They're two and two. Yeah, Steelers and Chiefs. That's who they lost to. I mean, I mean, I'm still gonna bet on Harbaugh. Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna go Broncos. They start out 0 2, uh, losing their second game to the Steelers, and since then they've won every game. Defense has looked way better. Defense, I think, is top five right now. Their line plays top five. Bonex is doing enough to keep them alive with a lot less weapons. I'm gonna go Broncos. They're kind of red hot right now. Uh, then you had Steelers at Raiders. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> Steelers. I mean, yeah, gotta go Steelers. Falcons at Panthers. Falcons. I think Kirk has found kind of another wave of himself. Yeah. Um, boy, you know, it might not look as pretty. Um, I think Andy Dalton is going to mess around and find out. Um, yeah. But I, I still think the, the Falcons are on a trajectory to um, be a wild card spot for sure. Unfortunately, no swag and surf because it's not in Atlanta, but Falcons still winning. Uh, Lions at Cowboys. Uh, <laughs> like, I, boy, I chose all NFC North teams. I This is awful. In a bye week, I'm going to watch them all win because yep. I'm always right. I'm always right. Uh, 16 um, and 0. <laughs> 16 always, and 0, baby. Always right. <laughs> Every week. Um, yeah. I mean, Dallas, there's just something weird. They're they're not going 12 and 5 this year. Um, this this will be kind of the last year of McCarthy, and I, who knows what they do after this. But Lions are, are Lions are just a tough out. Yeah. I'm picking picking Lions. Uh Cowboys still have those injury bugs. Lions coming off a bye week. Gotta go Lions. Bengals at Giants. Giants. I'm just kidding. Um, but that's Joe the, Burrow. Uh, that's the cool that's pick. The Bengals year. Right. That, that, that's the Bengals year, though. They <laughs> they just are losing. And the Bengals defense is so, so bad that the Giants could sneak this one out. Joe Burrow's um, playing really good. He, I mean, they have the top five scoring offense and the last scoring defense in the league. Right. However, he leads the league in touchdown passes, and if he plays a shred of what he did last week, they easily win against the Giants. I want to buy easy because I guess because I think the Bengals defense still lets up like thirty points, but the but the Bengals might score forty, so <laughs> so I guess it's still win. <laughs> exactly. So I'll go Bengals, and then the last game: Bills at the Aaron Rodgers coach Jets. Woof. 
Uh, usually when you fire a coach, you come back and rah, rah, win. I mean, yeah, all the Raiders does. last year, yeah. you know, that probably wasn't good for them. Look at where they are now. Uh, I'm going to say it now. The Jets are broken. Um, they, yeah. eight weeks from now, we're not even going to be, um, considering them for a playoff spot. No. They, a, they're not even going to be close. It's super weird. It's super weird. I, I know I said earlier not to overreact to things, but, um, <laughs> you know, the, we got to say something in here that, you know, ripples waves, but I don't even think this ripples waves. Bills are going to have their way with them. Um, Minnesota last week when they played them played terrible on and offense. Still won. Yeah, it's still one. Like everyone on the, like they interviewed Jefferson after the game and it was just like, yeah, we suck, but we won, I guess. Like, Pretty much. And they had it. Basically, heading into the bye week, you're like, I almost kind of like that win because you didn't win 35 to 10. Yep. Totally. And you're like, oh, I, I, we can take a break. It's like, no, we got to get some stuff figured out offensively. Yep. Um, but uh, there's one guy that uh, I think is hungry for a win, and that's Josh Allen. I think he's going to bounce back. I agree. I mean, the Jets have got a lot of weird stuff going on. Firing the coach after he didn't want to get fired. Him being escorted out of the building. Devontae Adams rumors. Um, Aaron Rodgers high on ayahuasca or whatever he's on. So it's it's a weird team. I got to go Bills as well. So th- that kinda is... Like the, go ahead. Kinda like the, this is kind of like the Brett Favre year. So next year, Aaron will be in Minnesota and throwing a pick in the NFC Championship game. The way God intended. That has yes. been the Northern Steel Podcast. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you to Derek for joining us. Big shout outs to Derek. You can find us on Twitter, on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube, on uh, Grinder, on Grubhub, on Pornhub, on uh, uh, Tinder, and on uh, Bejeweled.com. Derek, do you have any last words for the people that they want to hear from you? Um, Let's see here. I'm just going to make a bold prediction. Um, Steelers go... and he's frozen just the way God intended (laughs) Derek's frozen in classic fashion see you guys next week deuces